Sometimes when I'm lonesome, I lecture my guinea hens. So it's a good thing you're here, Comp 1, Section 74. You know, it wouldn't be responsible to have a writing class uh, without some talk of revision. Revision is the idea of uh, taking something and making it better. If you've got a bad haircut, well, you, you get a better one. If uh, you used to garden in rows, which created all kinds of weeds, well, switch it up. Garden in boxes, and then mulch between them to uh, deal, with, uh, deal with the weed problem. I have to tell you that the idea of revision is something I'm, I'm just kind of uh, torn on in a lot of different directions, torn asunder, because I've heard so many things about it from so many different people over the years. Um, I know that you've probably had English teachers who were process right, uh, taught process writing. And, and this idea, you pre-write, you write a series of drafts, and then at the end you publish. A little uh, a product kicks out. Uh, I've had my problems with process writing in the years because what if a good text doesn't kick out, you know? What if you do this step-by-step -step thing and, uh, and it doesn't work? Writing's more complicated uh, to me than that. It's just sort of a messy process, really. I remember um, bringing the American writer Billy Collins uh, to my students years ago. I haven't told you this yet, but I used to have a wealthy donor uh, that enabled me to bring some of the greatest poets in this country to my old classroom and my old teaching life. Uh, here's a picture of me and Billy Collins. Um, Billy Collins told some university students uh, that I brought him to one afternoon, he said, you know what, revision is for sissies. It's for sissies. And then later, when he was with my high school students, I said, what did you mean by that? Billy Collins said that, uh, you know what, actually writing can be likened uh, to cooking. If you have a bunch of people over, uh, there, there are cooks who will uh, make a wonderful meal and then just, just destroy their kitchen and clean it up at the very end of the night. That's kind of the, the way I cook up in that kitchen. Uh, there are also cooks, Billy says, who clean up as they go along. They tidy as they cook. Billy Collins told my students that as a cook, he's the kind of guy who makes a big mess, a big explosion. And as a writer, he's the kind of writer that tidies up as he uh, goes along. Um, I've had students in the past who have engaged in revision and those who not. The research says that it's more likely a young woman uh, that's going to revise a, uh, a paper uh, rather than a young man. Young men are utilitarian. We get it on a screen, we get it on paper, and we call it done. Women are going to want to fuss with it and dither research out there that proves it. So when I get confused about something like revision, I go to uh, famous writers and I think about them. We could think about F. Scott Fitzgerald. When he wrote The Great Gatsby, he revised that thing backwards and forwards. It drove himself crazy. And he revised it so thoroughly he ended up with more than one text. Uh, there are, there's more than one version of The Great Gatsby. That's what makes it unstable. We could think too of Gustave Flaubert. While he was writing Madame Bovary, he'd work all morning on a sentence and then fling himself on his couch in exhaustion, and then write his friends long letters about how horrible it was to be an iconic, world-famous French writer. I think, too, of uh, my hero, like I keep dropping his name, Jorge Luis Borges, uh, in this beautiful little book called His Craft of Verse. When he gets near the end, he says, Had I advice to give to writers, and I do not think they need it, because everyone has to find out things for himself, I would tell them simply this. I would ask them to tamper as little as they can with their own work. I do not think tinkering does any good. The moment comes when one has found out what one can do, when one has found one's natural voice, one's rhythm. Then I do not think that slight emendations should prove useful. Well, about three, four centuries before uh, this Argentinian wrote this, Desiderius Erasmus, who I just adore, uh, he used to go into his classrooms and tell his students to rewrite the same sentence again and again and again in as many different styles as they possibly could. Uh, he thought that that kind of revision would lead them to be great writers. And he models it. Uh, in this very famous book that a student bought me, The Rhetorical Tradition, Readings from Classical Times to the Present, there's some examples of Erasmus doing exactly this. He takes the idea, I'll never forget you, and he rewrites it again and again and again. Always as long as I live, I shall remember you. Never as long as I live shall I fail to remember you. Never during the time I yet shall live shall forgetfulness of you overcome me. At no time while I have life shall you disappear from my thoughts. Okay, this goes on for pages and pages and pages. The same sentence rewritten again and again and again. Don't do that. It'll make you hate writing. In terms of revision, um, I just want to tell you a few things. Uh, 
from my heart and from my experience. Um, if you want to revise a paper for a better grade, you, know, you can certainly do that, a mildly better grade. There's only two conditions. You have to talk to me about it, either in an email conversation or on the telephone, or come visit me in my office. You also can't ask me how to make it an A essay. Please don't do that. I don't have the exact moral road to do that. I can offer you little tips, too. Take a look at your essay when you're done with it uh, and, and, and just look it over. Uh, have, you, have you given it a decent title? Does it have dread shrinking paragraph syndrome? Is the conclusion shorter than the introduction? Have you started out too many sentences in a row with that noun cluster pattern? Time to break it up. Any part of speech can get a, can get a sentence going. But in all my years of teaching, I think the single most important thing I've ever told my students is this. When you write a paper, you're going to write it with this inner voice. And you're going to write in silence. You're either going to write on paper or you're going to tap on a keyboard. But you are composing that essay with an inner voice. Most students read their own writing silently to themselves. If you do that, you're going to be evaluating and trying to self-assess the paper with the same inner voice that wrote it. It's like jumping over your own shadow. You can't do it. Even, ah, I'm looking at my guinea hens there. Even though it's written, even though it's written on paper and it's literate in some senses, writing always has the quality of something being heard. Okay, uh, We don't even have people reading silently uh, uh, in, in history until the 4th century. Uh, Augustine uh, noticed either Ambrose or Jerome, I can't remember which, moving his lips one day and, and not reading the words. And then later, uh, he, he, he noticed that he, he was reading quietly. Texts were meant to be proclaimed for years. I don't think that's over. Listen to your own writing out loud. Hear it. Or, even better, have someone read it to you. Uh, if you're living at home still, maybe your mom. If you, uh, some of you are married, uh, you've got girlfriends and boyfriends, have them read it to you. If you do that, if you listen to a text, you will be astonished at what you'll hear. You'll hear errors, you'll hear tone-deaf phrases, you'll hear the kinds of mistakes uh, that, that you, you simply can't if you're reading uh, quietly to yourself. I th in, in the years uh, that I've done this with students and told them this, Little miracles have happened. Sometimes if a student really writes a tone-deaf sentence, I'll write in the margins, read this to yourself so they can hear it, so they can hear your, their own error. Or if they're nearby, I'll say to the student, listen to what you wrote, listen to this. And then they cringe, they, 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 they don't, they don't want to hear it, or they're going to want to grab it and go read it to themselves. Um, in terms of revision, uh, I think the thing I'm going to do here is just sort of uh, punt, so to speak, and go to a bigger, better English teacher than me. Pretty soon on our news page in D2L, you're going to see a link to uh, a film that was made by a man of genius. His name was Richard Lanham. He taught at the University of Chicago and other places. He wrote a very famous book uh, called Style, an anti-textbook. And I have his gear on my bookshelves in my little glass porch, always near. He's just one of my little friends that I need nearby. In 1983, he wrote, made a film called Revising Prose. There are some drawbacks. It's 1983. It's made with something that he calls TV graphics, probably with an early Apple II GS. You could probably find them in a museum. These graphics, particularly for you gamers, are going to be painful. They will haunt you the rest of your life. If there's musicians here, you're going to be haunted too because it's, uh, the soundtrack is made with an old Farfisa synthesizer. You know, um, but if you can cut past that and get to his content uh, and, and, and not the form, you are going to really learn some things about writing and how to revise your own prose. Don't take him too seriously. Lanham is all about getting sentences going fast. He's going to come close to forbidding you to, uh, to use the passive construction, but he does a lot of wonderful things uh, in that video. It's about 30 minutes long. We're going to splice it into two parts, and I really hope you watch it. It will really help you uh, as a writer. He's got wonderful advice, and he particularly uh, is... Uh, appropriately irked uh, by the kind of useless, vapid euphemism, uh, particularly used by bureaucrats. I don't know if you know any bureaucrats. I do. But um, what I could tell you about revision uh, um, probably is, isn't any more important than what you can find uh, in that video. I just want to get you thinking about it, uh, about thinking about your own writing and trying to make it better in the same way you make a haircut better, make a garden better, uh, uh, you know, repaint a house. It's about uh, uh, improvement. But don't get too obsessive about it. Maybe Borges was right. Maybe when you write a paper, write a sentence, write a paragraph, maybe you'll get it right the first time. I, don't know. I have no idea, but good luck with it. Good luck with it in the striving.